Fuck, 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 feel the blood creeping up from the heathens. Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason. If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gon' feed them. If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon. I got eyes in the back of my head, I'm seeing. Take me for granted, and you know I'm leaving. I'ma take what's mine with the webs I'm Ladies and gentlemen, the PG era is over. Shop so freezing, so cold. The whole frostbite they feeling. I could tear you apart, or I could go healing. Starting, rumor is the rumor is starting this Monday night. This upcoming Monday night, raw. The PG era is over. Does this have anything to do with Vince McMahon no longer being the CEO? What is going on here? The second he's gone as CEO. The TV 14 is done. The PG era is over. What the heck is going on? Multiple sources. Being the CEO. Starting to confirm the situation is, is real. Now, now again, this can go two ways, right? This can go two ways. You can have a, a TV 14 return, and um, it could still be terrible, right? Because I, I really was not the biggest fan of 07 and 08 and 09, and they really started ramping up the PG around that time. Even in 08, 07, it was kind of weird. It was still Spirit Squad DX and that sort of thing, remember? So, but I, you know... I don't know, man. So the, I really believe you could have put on a PG show as long as you had good writing. And the thing about it is I don't think that they had good decisions, good writing, and the talent wasn't good enough to deal with it. So what does this change? I don't know. I, think, I, I honestly think the problem started first with the writing, the wrestlers not being able to go off the cuff a little bit. Maybe this allows that. Maybe going TV 14 is part of that. Where if somebody says something somewhat questionable, it's not a question because it's TV-14, so there's no risk there. I don't know. Joe, what is this corny music? Well, it's free music is what it is in Closure. It's YouTube free music that won't unmonetize me. <laughs> so that's what that music is, bro. Um, so, wow. So, I'm, you know, again, like I said, I'm worried about it a little bit because, again, they need to figure out the belt situation. That's a big problem. The belts, the star power is still not there. They're still not growing right now. You know, when they when they turned to TV 14 the, the first time back in the day or the, when they went Attitude Era, you know, the ratings were starting. Well, I mean, I guess I guess they were in a hole when they did it the last time and then they the ratings blew up, I guess. So maybe maybe that's the case. Maybe they think, hey, we can launch ourselves out of this. I, I think it could be desperation, but maybe they've got something planned, but they never have before. Every other time we think they've got something figured out or planned or uh, whatever. Um, I said a, a guy who told me to die, I told him have a heart attack. Um, so it is what it is, man. TV 14 is, is returning this Monday night. Apparently this is crazy out of nowhere news. Like this is, you talk about out of nowhere tonight. If we do out of nowhere tonight for about an hour or so, uh, this will be obviously the main topic. We'll have hours throughout the day today to go over it and to figure it out. But you know, th mostly this comes from, um, Andrew from the Matman podcast. I've always been friends with Andrew. Uh, this guy is not a liar. You know what I'm saying? Like he he is not a liar. He is a, a person who rarely tweets stuff like this unless he means it. Andrew Zarian. He doesn't mess around if he's got something. I I don't think I've ever seen him say anything like this before. But um, you know even. Uh, but everybody is crediting Andrew, so it, this is his story. You know, apparently, this is his. He's the first one. I mean, even Br Wrestling, 
and so and so are they're all reporting it back to Andrew Zarian. So this is Andrew's deal. This is his, this is on him if it's not right. <laughs> I think, but uh, I think you know, starting July, he says starting July eighteenth, uh, and this is pretty. I mean, people pretty much are not gonna. I don't think disputing it. Starting July 18th, WWE Raw will have a TV 14 rating moving forward on the USA Network. The PG era is over. Now, what it would now what will it have on the Fox? So maybe Fox won't be PG, but Raw will be PG. I mean, Raw is the one that certainly needs it, with Raw being three hours, you know. But they really need good writing, and they really need better wrestlers and better stories and better whatever. But maybe maybe this will help them take the leash back a little bit on all the promos. The promos won't be so overridden, written, and ridiculous as always. Um, you know, I don't know, man. Crazy. Uh, but this is something that obviously I, I got all your tweets. You guys have been tweeting me for a while, but uh, I I don't have Twitter right now. I'm still suspended on Twitter for another five days on Twitter and no Mr. Metz in the chat. I'm not always off from work. If I was off from work, I would have been live with this two hours ago when it actually broke. So once again, sir, you're wrong. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, BR. You're wrong. <laughs> uh, we made $500 yesterday. So you're angry. I get it. It's okay. It's okay, baby. It's going to be okay. It's going to be all right, buddy. Watch everything all day long. You're going to love it. Oh, why don't you go dox some people? Oh, you love doxers. Go support doxers. Shit bum. My bad. Joe do a stone cold TV 14 promo. Well, WWE's returning back to, to TV 14. I'll do it in a minute. Maybe I'll like play. I'll play some music or something. I don't know. Enclosure one four four zero p, fourteen forty p. Man, now that's a, now that's a uh, that's a beautiful screen right there, man. Let me tell you that. Um, let me see what else the chat is saying. I'm glad that Br exposed himself though in the chat. That was good to finally be able to to block him again. Um, he thinks like, what do you change? Would you change your name so that uh, like Ronald Booth? He changed his name backwards so it's Br. What's up, Ron Booth? How you doing, man? Good job changing your name, brother. Damn. Hey, Ronald Booth, what's up, bro? Enjoy all the Doxer streams all day. How you doing, Ron Booth? Good to see you again. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. Have a sip of coffee for me, bro. Hey, yeah. Hey, keep supporting Doxers who attack people's families. That's awesome. Good to see you in the chat, though. You're a great guy. You sound like a good person. I hope your parents die in a fire. Uh, Mountain Football, what's up? Finally, the PG era is over. Monday night, this Monday, July 18th. It's going down, bro. It's going down. We're done. And yes, I would have been live with this two hours ago. I would have loved to have been live with this two hours ago when it actually first broke. But I was at work. And now I'll be going back there soon. So I only have a little bit. Um, but yes, you can make you can put whatever make-believe thing in your brain you want about me. Go ahead all day. You make it up in your head. It's it's great. Uh, enclosure, thank you, bro. Thank you to Stimulus5, who donated on the other th thing that doesn't alert. He just privately donated. Thanks for the 20 bucks. He says, I don't know if this is really going to solve anything, Joe, but at least it's something. Let's see again. And yes, I agree with you. Like, let's see again. How many times have they done this is the... But this is significant. I mean, this is different. I mean, could it all be for nothing? Yes, it's possible. It could all be for nothing. It is possible. But, I mean, man, it's been, what, since 2008? 2008, man. Like, this is significant in a way. I mean, when was wrestling really decent the last time it was good? And I know that we've said it doesn't need to be TV 14 to be good. We've said this a million times. It doesn't need to be TV 14. But it's like, it's, it's, I don't know, like, like put, put the correlation together of how good everything was, right? Like, um. 2008 had had better stuff than now. 
2007 had better stuff than now. 2006, it all was better. So, you know, I mean, put that correlation together. I mean, so if they're going to go back, maybe, maybe this, maybe they're just not that good at making TV PG. Maybe that's their problem. Maybe PG was only somewhat good in the PG era because they had John Cena. They had the big names and like they had CM Punk come along and that stuff with like CM Punk had such a great presence and attitude with Chris Jericho and John Cena and they still were able to carry that wave. But they thought the PG was going to open them up to more kids and growing audience and an expandable audience. But all it ever did was shrink them. All they continued to do was shrink downward after the PG era. I would say post 2013. I would say that, that you know PG was somewhat seemingly successful 08, 09, 10, 11, 12. But really since they launched the PG era, the ratings I believe have done almost nothing but go down. So that's not good, right? You know. So I this, you know you got to do something. I mean, they're a little too late in my opinion, but I mean here we go, it's something. Uh, yes, thank you for the for the dono, man. I appreciate the donation. Donation link is pinned to the top of the stream, and um, or you can do a super chat if you like. If you guys want to become members, sometimes we have to put members mode on only uh, because of all the craziness and trolling and psychos. So I do. Uh, if you want to become a member, become a member down below. We're gonna have a stream for you guys. Uh, live sex on Raw says Annette Morris. Yeah, that could happen. I mean, we had it on my show a couple weeks ago. We had a live sex celebration with Danny MT and his girl. I mean, God, that was hot. I mean, who doesn't remember that? It was a fun time. Shit bomb. One thing to note, this is 14 years after going PG. Right. They are just growing with their audience. They are just growing with their audience? Um. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I mean, I, 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 I don't know, John. What up, John Cream? I think they thought, you know, like I said, that they were going to expand into this world of different stuff with PG. It was going to give them a more open, um, a more a, a bigger reach, a more expandable reach. They're more sellable to companies and, and products and places and things like that. And I just think that it didn't really work out the way they thought. And I think the first five to six years of the PG era, like you couldn't even count those. You couldn't even... You couldn't even try to figure out if it paid off yet because the first five to six years of the PG era, they were really just, you know, running off of the pre the previous years. You know, you know they were running off of uh, all the success of the Attitude eras and, and the and the ruthless aggression era and the great ratings that they had at that point. So I don't think that those counted. So you're you're looking at no real results until about, you know, 08, 09, 10, 11, 12. Around 2012, 2013 is when you can make the assessment for results. And luckily for them around that time is when Daniel Bryan started to pick up and CM Punk is was on his way out actually. And once CM Punk left and Bryan got over, but then Bryan got hurt and he was gone. That was it at that point. So they had used up all this momentum from the previous eras. And what little momentum they had from their new superstars like Daniel Bryan and uh, CM Punk. CM Punk was gone. Daniel Bryan was injured and out. And then they were really left with nothing. John Cena started stepping back a little bit after that. So everything sort of fell apart. So this, I, I can say that, you know, they never really got momentum. They always had this sort of bullets over, uh, band-aids over bullet holes. You know, there was always something to, okay, uh, Brock Lesnar's coming back. Oh, oh my God, uh, John Cena is back again. Uh, you know, uh, oh no, uh, Goldberg is returning to wrestling. You know, they, they've always had something. The Ultimate Warrior is coming to Hall of Fame. And, you know, th there was always something that they had to come in to temper this collapse. And now you see what they're doing with bringing in Logan Paul and they're reaching out to Ki uh, Cardi B and they, they're offering to train Cardi B. Guys, they're trying to train Cardi B, and they're trying to train all these people from outside celebrities, and they, they've gotten kind of what they wanted with Logan Paul leaving messages on his Instagram or whatever, being like, I'm coming to Raw in two weeks or whatever, or, you know, whatever. That's wonderful promotion for them, but I don't know, but the problem is all these people tune in, and then they go, hey, man, Logan Paul's going to be on that wrestling thing. I got to check that out, and then they check it out, and they go, this is dumb. This is lame. What the hell is this? And so nobody stays. And so the next time Logan Paul goes, I'm coming to Raw again. People go, oh, yeah, that's that wrestling stuff was 
It was kind of dumb. I don't know. I watched, it was boring. I watched it. It was like stupid, stupid wrestling, you know? So what they need is people to tune in and to see some crazy shit go down. You know what I mean? And then they'll be like, whoa, Logan Paul does this? Oh, I'm a big Logan Paul fan and this stuff's crazy. What's going on? And they're going to have to want to watch it. But nobody wants to watch this shit that we're seeing now. You raised a piece of shit. Whoa. Joe explained this TV 14 deal. Can they freely curse live on TV? Can they do hardcore matches with blood and spikes? I never watched him. Joe, explain this TV 14 deal. Um, yeah, they can say things like uh, they can do uh, they could do blood now. I think um, they could do. Um, I don't know what the what the the USA's networks rules are because the networks are usually also. Um, um, you know, they have a bit of a say as well, but TV 14 is like, you want to be over 14 years of age, like kids under 14, it's not suitable. That's what they say. So somebody could say you could, yeah, somebody could say shit. Somebody could say piss bitch i mean they've always been able to say bitch shit it's it's the swearing it's more of the content matter to me like you know like you can't hit people with certain things and they got to be careful with where they go with darkness and and stuff like that um you know drinking angles or or saying certain things i mean they kind of dance the line to be honest when they were pg when they've been pg this last 14 years i mean they've danced the line you know and as far as the audience in, in the audience, you know, the audience has heard the F bomb. They've heard the S word. They've seen some little things that went into TV mature a little bit, TV 14 a little bit. But as far as what you see on TV, they blank it out. So, you know, you really haven't crossed that, but you've they've danced close to it. Now they can be right in it and they can dance probably a little further if they want to, I believe. So I think that this will help with, in my opinion, scripts, you know, and people being able to go off the, you know, off the script a little bit or to have bullet points again, because probably before they were so concerned with, you cannot say this, like you cannot just go off and say what you want because we've got all these contracts and situations. So now, you know, maybe you can go back to some bullet points again, you know? Maybe you can go back to some bullet points again where they're not as afraid to let the wrestlers go because if they do go a little too far, uh, you know, it's still TV 14. So they've got that covering because before you remember before it was TV PG. I mean, dude, it was PG. That was supposed to be like good for all kids like five years old and, and you know, for the most part. I mean, it's not G, right? There's no G rating. I don't even think there is a G rating. But I mean, TV PG is like, you got to be very, very clean for the most part. You know, depending on what time it is, it matters too. Like the 10, 10 o'clock hour and 11 o'clock, you know, to 11 o'clock was, I mean, but you really couldn't do much. I suppose this is part of it. But again, it's not going to matter if the scripts aren't better. If they get rid of belts, there's too many championships. There's too many scripts. Uh, if they still book the same way that they're booking, it's still going to be a mess. So they got to fix all this. But the only thing I can say for their favor is, well, last time it was TV 14, it was 2008. And WWE was a lot better. Every year you go back, it gets better. 08 was good. 07 was better. 06 was better than that. 05 was pretty good. 04, 03, 02, 01, 2000, 1999, 1998, 1997. I, I would say the first step back is 97, right? Like if you went to the popularity of WWE, the best, I love 97, by the way. I actually like 97 and I kind of like 96 a little bit, but it was a little rough. But certainly 1993, 1994, 1995, especially 1995, WWE 1995 was it was was rough. I mean, like let's be honest about that. 
that was a rough year. 94, but 95 especially, and 96 was a little bit rough as well. Um, but 97 was, it started to get much better in 1997. And then certainly 1998 was when it started becoming a new show that was off, just going, like it was going off, bro, in 98. And then certainly by 99, they probably hit their, they probably hit the top of their game in 99. And uh, yeah, I would say that's the crescendo. I think 99 is the epitome. I think 97, 98, and then 99, they hit this peak. Then 2000, they kind of just, they, they sort of like dipped and then started going flat in a, in a good way, like a flatlining high grade from 2000 to 2001 to 2003 to 2004, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then around, 2000, around 2006, 7, and 8, they started dipping a little bit. And then 9 and 10, and they just started going down after that. And that's the case. I mean, like if you could if you could give me five years of WWE, I would have to take probably 1997, 8, 9, 10, 2000, yeah, 2001 and 2000. I guess I would probably I would take 97 to 2001 if I had to take any kind of era. Like 97 to 2001 was nuts. I mean, certainly some of the wrestling wasn't the greatest, right? It was more the storytelling in the week to week show that I'm talking about. I'm more so talking about Raw. Because you can go back and watch some of those pay-per-views and the wrestling, it's all punching and kicking and backdrop and slam and, you know, goofy stuff happens, interference, and people are going, you know, it wasn't the best time for necessarily in-the-ring wrestling performance. But one one other thing about that time, though, is that the wrestlers sold punches and kicks so much better. Like, I hate the punches and kicks now that many people do. It looks terrible. Um, so, but whatever, you know, but I would say that maybe some of the wrestling from like, you know, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, you know, Ric Flair in the early nineties and, and, you know, some of that stuff is better, but the storytelling in the, in 1997 to 2001 is unbelievable. Hell, I even think that the stone cold Steve Austin, Brian Pillman thing, didn't that even happen in 1996? Like that's really where it started, where the where the attitude stuff kind of came in a little bit, and that was 1996, wasn't it? Where Stone Cold broke into um, Brian Pillman's mansion, although it looked like a trailer park when he broke in the house or whatever. I don't know what was going on there. It's still the funniest thing. Shit bomb. Television maturity ratings don't matter if they have the same writers. Remember when we were shaking things up? Ha ha. Yeah. No, I mean I I want to say you're right, but. You know, what a broken nerd. I want to say you're right, but again, James Mesner, man, we haven't seen TV 14 since 2008. So, I mean, things were better then. Things were better in 08, 07, 06, and before. Um, Emperor Pause, thank you. Has WWE dipped in the past last five years? Has WWE dipped in the last five years, in your opinion, Joe? Says Emperor Pause. Of course. Of course it's dipped. That's not even a that's not even really a question in a, in an opinion. It 100% is dipped. I mean, we could the ratings are gone. The ratings have dipped. The attendance has dipped. Now WWE is a money-making business has not dipped. WWE is a money-making business has made more money than ever. But if you're talking about the quality of content and the interest of people, of course it's dipped. Less people watch their YouTube than before. Less people watch their their Monday and Friday shows. You know, well, actually, SmackDown you can make a case a little bit for because, but it went to Fox, so it got more viewership. But it's also dipped a little bit. So even Fox has dipped. So when when it launched on Fox, they started with three million again, right? We couldn't believe it. But then they now now they're back to like you know two million and whatever. So yeah, oh yeah, of course it's dipped. And look at my views. Look at my show. Look at everyone's shows. They're all down. Anybody who covers wrestling, the views are down as far as WWE goes. A AEW isn't down. It's it's about the same. You know, it, it A AEW is still about where it was. You know, they they've come on the scene, grown a little bit, shrunk and grown a little bit, really a, the tiny bits, but they've really been around. You know, about a million people, a million active viewers. Um but their million viewers tend to not really care that much about Rampage on a Friday night. And, um, you know, their million viewers don't all make it to every Wednesday night show either. So, you know, they've really been staying around where they've been. WWE has gone from Raw 
Five years ago, Raw was at 3 million viewers. You know, three years ago, Raw was at one point, uh, at 2.5 million viewers. You know, two years ago, Raw was at 2.1 million viewers. You know, a, about a year and a half ago or a year ago, or maybe it was two years ago now, actually, Raw sunk down to 1.9 to 1.8. And now here we are with Raw always being at a 1.5 to a 1.8. Raw. And I said eight years ago that around this time you would see Raw drop below 2 million viewers. And you are going to see Raw eventually break the record again for lowest viewership and get down to 1.4 million unless they do something. Maybe this is that something, the TV 14 thing. Maybe this is that something because otherwise they're on their way to 1.4 million viewers which makes them $4 million away from where AEW is. Doesn't take a genius to look at a line graph and then do the math that, oh, WWE is going to be equal to AEW soon. WWE, five years ago, had 2.5 million viewers. WWE, three years ago, had 2 million viewers. WWE, two years ago, had 1.9 million viewers. WWE a year ago had 1.8 million viewers. WWE right now has about 1.7 million viewers. Right now, average. 1.7 on Raw. So it doesn't take a genius to realize that soon the low, low is going to be 1.4 and high is going to be 1.8 maybe. 1.7. Right now, for Raw, a high would be a 2 or a 1.9 and the low is about a 1.5. But we're trending towards a 1.4 being the low and a 1.7 and a 1 or 8 being the high. So we're trending down. And we've been trending down since I started this show. I started the Joe Cronin show, this wrestling show, almost 10 years ago. August of 2012. or third, uh, Is it 12? Yeah, 2012, August. I started this channel. I started this show. We're coming up on a 10 years. And when I started, I started because I was worried about this very thing. You can go back and watch all my reviews, all my videos, 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And I repeat it over and over again. It's a downward trend. And other people say, oh, well, ratings aren't what they used to be. Things are different. Yes, I, I know there's a lot of excuses. I know there are, and there's a real reason. And it's way harder than ever. I understand that. But other shows go up. Other shows on TV grow ratings. Other shows on TV have bad ratings and grow ratings. I can see other people have shows that get 3 million views, that get 4 million views, that have ratings go up and down depending on how good the show is. Well, your show has done nothing but pretty much trend downward and never, never ever go up and stay up. It's never gone up and stayed up or started trending up. It goes up for a second, goes down, 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 goes up for a second, down, 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 down. That's what happens. Um, so th there is a clear reason this is not new. We've been talking about this now for 10 years on my channel. We've watched as it's declined. So is this the reason they, they just can't write PG? And if it is, wow, it took them 14 years to figure this out. But I'm still concerned because once again, you still have to execute. They still have to execute. I don't care if they make it TV mature. I don't care if they make it R-rated, X-rated. If it sucks, it sucks. There's e there's some ECW stuff that was terrible, and it was on freaking pay-per-view, and it wasn't, and it was stupid, and it was rated R and X, and it was on pay-per-view, and I watched it. Some of it was great, some of it was all right, and some of it was trash. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if it's G, PG, whatever. There's amazing children's movies. I, you know what I love? I love Moana. That's a Disney movie. I, it's the new, it's one, it's the newest Disney movie that I like. You know, there's a lot of other Disney movies recently. I don't really like them that much. I love Moana. I love that. I love that movie. I watch it with my daughter and my boys. I watch it with the whole family. I can watch that movie a million times. I love Moana. I love that movie. Even Frozen. Frozen's all right. But I think Frozen kind of gets old after a couple watches. Like it's like, all right. But Moana, I, I love that movie. That's a PG movie. You know, and it's got the rock in it too. But I love that movie. It's a PG movie. How can I love it? Because I think it's good. Because it's good. They do they it's a good story. It's got good songs. It's got good story. It's got people you like. 
It's got fun. It, it And then there's a whole bunch of horror movies that are terrible because it doesn't matter. It has to just be a good story. So they couldn't tell a good PG uh, TV uh, PG story. So we're going to find out if they can tell a good story with um, TV 14. And yes, it is a little bit late. Hey, guys, guess what? The Monday Night Raw reviews are back, baby. I'm not quitting. <laughs> I'm back, baby. They found out that I was quitting, and they made a move. They were like, oh, my God, Joe Cronin's quitting his Raw review. Ten years? It really must be bad. It must be bad. We've Oh, my God, do something. We can't let Joe quit. Is it a coincidence that I was quitting last week? And my, my video last week, and now it's TV 14? Stephanie McMahon is watching. She's watching me. I'm back, baby. I'm back on Monday nights. I didn't even have to leave. I just had to threaten that I was leaving, and they turned it to TV freaking 14. I mean, dude, 10 years on YouTube doing a Raw review. I've never said I'm done and I'm quitting and I am done with Raw reviews. Never said it until last Monday. Now it's TV 14. Conspiracy, conspiracy, conspiracy. I'm telling you, man, this is weird. This is bizarre. I didn't even think about this until just now. Wow. Wing. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm losing my mind. Let's go to the donation. Shit bomb. Mankind's entrance music is actual audio of Jeff Hardy crashing into pedestrians. Ha ha. You oh. think this news will give Raw's rating a boost? Oh my God. Uh, on delay peasy. Thank you for becoming a $5 shit bomb, man. I really appreciate that. Hey man, Buffalo, New York. Maybe your bills can do it this year, man. I'm telling you. I'm so jealous, bro. You guys looked so good last year. What the hell, man? How did that not happen for you? The quarterback was so fire last year, man. And I hate the Bills, man. Obviously. But I I, I feel bad. That was that was crazy. Uh yeah, uh, I don't know. Raw ratings boost? You think this will yeah, I think this will give Raw a ratings boost. I do. Yes, I do. Not a ton. Because they're going to have to prove something first. They're going to have to prove that the show is going to get good first. But what I will say is, yes, I do think the ratings will slightly go up. I don't know how up. So the ratings were a 1.5 for the July 4th episode. They were, I think, a 1.7 last Monday. So with this announcement, there's a possibility that ratings could go up to about a 1.8, 1.9, maybe a 2. Uh, because of the anticipation, curiosity of everybody finding out it's TV 14. So, you know, I'll say they'll go, I'll say they'll stay or go up slightly. Nothing crazy though. Again, I think that the, um, I think that they need the, um, they need to prove that they're going to be good first. You know what I mean? How can you hate the bills? Well, I mean, I'm, you know, New England Patriots, so we don't, you know, we don't like them. Uh, but I, I, I think I, it's. Over the years, we have a beef with their fans, you know? But we don't hate anybody more than the Jets, so don't worry, Buffalo Bills. I would actually invite a Buffalo Bills fan into my house for dinner. You know what I mean? Because we could, like, I think we can kind of get along, you know? You guys are from a cold place. We're from a cold place. Red, white, and blue colors. You know, the Patriots logo and the Bills logo, they look kind of similar-ish. Uh, you know, uh, um, you hate the Jets, too. Um, you know, you're kind of the underdogs and for years, the Patriots were underdogs. We were always losers. Um, so, you know, we have that in common, you know, so, uh, you guys like hockey a lot. We do too. Uh, but a Jets fan, you know, you're not coming to my house. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. You know, you're really ruthless assholes. We are too. You guys, you guys are actually, um, the Buffalo is probably tougher now at this point. New England fans have become soft after winning all these years. You know, we used to be tough and gritty and crazy, but now we're more like, we're the Patriots. You know, we used to be like the Bills fans. We used to be like, yeah, all right. Now the Patriots fans are like, we are the Patriots now. 
We're the tied for the most championships ever. You know, but yeah, the Patriots fans, we used to be nuts. Now we're not. Just like the Red Sox fans. The Red Sox fans, we used to be nuts. We used to be like, fuck the Yankees, blow me Yankees, you fuck. Now we're like, oh, Yankees, <laughs> you guys, man, something. You know, it's like, it's a whole, it's weird. You win like, you win more than two titles within 10, 20 years and like people just change, you know? But if you go, if you never have won ever like the Patriots in the 90s and you had never won in 70 years like the Patriots in the 90s or the Red Sox in the 90s, you know, the fans become bitter and insane. And that's where the Buffalo Bills fans are right now. Even the Cubs fans aren't there anymore now that they've won. But the Buffalo Bills fans, oh, they're there. The Buffalo Bills fans are the most dangerous people in this country right now. I don't know if there's anybody more dangerous than a team that drinks that much beer, has that many heart issues, that many obese women, mothers, and daughters, and haven't ever won a championship and live in the cold. Sorry. So um, that's basically why I say there's no there's no other d more dangerous team than the Buffalo Bills. Let me tell you that right now, okay? My wife will tell you about her titties. That's right, they're nice tits. <laughs> they're Sound fucking flat. beautiful. They're fucking wicked awesome, man. Um, thank you, uh, Leah, for that. Appreciate that. You can be on the show, even though you're not on the show. Uh, the Andrew Show. Hey, Andrew, how you doing? I hope the Yankees' uh, plane goes down. How about that? Uh, remember, <laughs> what up, Ty? Uh, let me go back to the donations real quickly. Uh, thank you guys for supporting me, even if you are a Yankees fan. Thank you. You raised a piece of shit. Hey, Joe. I feel like this will open the doors for writers to make more mature and adult-themed storylines. The pond has shifted from kids to teens and young adults again. Yep. No more writers hearing about how kids will take their segment. Only helps WWE emo. I really do think, yeah, it only helps the writers. Assuming that there are good enough writers there now. You know what I mean? So let's hope that there are good enough writers there now and that, that you know, a lot of these writers aren't already gone from the company that could have been really good at that point. You know what I'm saying? Um, my favorite baseball teams are, um, well, the Red Sox. I mean, I live, I'm in, Bo I'm live in Boston. Red Sox, Cubs, and Mets. I like the Red Sox, Cubs, and Mets. There you go. I like the Mets. It's a New York team. I like them. I actually like the Mets, even though they beat the Red Sox in 86. That's weird. I don't like any other New York team. Oh, well, the, yeah, I don't mind the other, like, Giants. I don't care. I like. I don't mind the Giants, but I don't, I don't, but I don't, yeah, I actually like the Mets. It's weird. When I was a kid, I used to, they were like my alternate team with the Cubs and Red Sox and Mets. I would always switch between the three teams. I always, uh, yeah, it's weird, but usually I stay away from that stuff. But yeah, shit bum. There you go. Philadelphia is worst fan base. Oh, well, that's true. Red Comet Man, in a way, they're the most toughest and craziest. I know that, but they've won a little bit here or there. Do you know what I mean? They've won in the seventies. They, you know what I mean? Like they've won stuff. You know, the Eagles have won at some point. You know, I mean, they 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 also ate their own shit in the streets after they won. But you know, Red Comet Man, the Eagles have actually won something at some point. You know, the Broad Street Bullies. You know, the Phillies have actually won something. The fucking f flaming uh, team named after a flaming horse. Um, you imagine imagine your team was called the Phillies. Dude, just put a horse inside of you right now. You know, what, who's your team? The Phillies. Remember when Bill uh, Burr called it the uh, f*** it horse? Remember that? <laughs> Nothing's better than Bill Burr freaking out on that. <laughs> the Bill Burr freak out on Philly. <laughs> Man, it's such a classic, bro. Oh, my God. Where is the... <laughs> Where is it? Oh, my God, bro. This is so good. and they take out their big black dicks and they just shove them right in your fucking mouths, each and every one of you, and somehow they just keep repeatedly coming. <laughs> fucking Rocky is your hero. The whole pride of your city is built around a fucking guy who doesn't even exist. You got fucking Joe Frazier is from there, but he's black, so you can't fucking deal with him. So you make a fucking statue for some three-foot fucking Italian. You I mean, dude, Bill Burr cut a wrestling promo on Philly. Like, fuck you, you bunch of Philly cheese-eating motherfuckers. 
You god damn it. You got a statue of Rocky. He's not even a real guy. He's a stat he's a fake person. You got a statue of Rocky. When Joe Frazier is actually from here, but he's black, so you can't deal with him. So you don't <laughs> dude, he's just going off like he's just like this is just coming off his head like a promo. I mean, that is the funny like you get mad at the audience and then just start cutting a promo on him. Love it. That's back when before Bill Burr was an SJ. Well, no, he's not an SJW, but back when Bill Burr really had balls, you know. Not a fucking guy who doesn't even exist. You got fucking Joe Frazier is from there, but he's black, so you can't fucking deal with him. So you make a fucking statue for some three foot fucking Italian, you stupid Philly cheesy fucking jackasses. I hope that cheese melts your fucking faces off. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! The people were laughing at that. They, 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 they. <laughs> I, it's so funny because they're booing all the comedians off the stage, and then he comes out there and cuts a promo on him. They start cheering it because it was just <laughs> like they were like, "Whoa, shit bomb!" I agree with this. My team is white socks, and I don't need red socks. And I don't mind the red socks. Yeah. Well, I, I'm mad that you copied our socks. Red comment, man. Oh, boy. That was the best Bill Burr, man. That was hilarious. I'll never forget that. That was back when I used to see Bill Burr, like, around. Like, you would see Bill Burr around. I was doing stand-up comedy at that time in Boston, so I would see him around. You would never see that now, I don't think. You know what I mean? That guy was just hanging out places. Um, anyway, the, the that Philly rant will always be legendary. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is huge news. Monday night, Monday night raw goes back to TV 14 this Monday, according to this report by Andrew Zarian and everybody's reporting on it. Ross Berman also has a take on wrestling Inc. Andrew, uh, from the Matman podcast reporting the WWE raw will return to TV 14 rating July 18th. WWE's money. Monday night uh, product remained PG for 5,000 days after it began, uh, but the flagship program is officially back to its more mature roots, as they say. Beginning, uh, it was June 22nd, right before my birthday, June 22nd, 2008, when WWE took to the PG approach. That was the date for the people that wanted to know the exact date earlier. There you go. Red Common Man, thank you. Uh, Joe Cronin is back. I'm officially back doing live Raw reviews. I didn't even take a week off. I didn't even take a week off, guys. I said I was quitting, and then they announced they're going TV 14. This is, cra this is how important I am to the WWE. Do you guys realize this? That for the first time ever, I said I was quitting, and I'm done, and I'm leaving. And the next thing you know, WWE goes, oh, no, TV 14. So, this is incredible, man. It's good to be back. Monday night. John Ranson subscribed. What's up, John? Hey, John. Thank you, man, for hitting that sub button. If you guys haven't and you want to, subscribe. I'm live almost every other day or every day. We're live after every WWE event, after every AEW event. And, of course, you know my other shows that I do that are non-wrestling related right here on Joe Cron Show. Um, come hang out with us, man. We want to make uh, people laugh. Shock the hell out of you, and um, if you're offended, this is not the place for you, I'll tell you that. You know? Especially with my wife running around saying shit like this. That's right, they're nice tits. <laughs> they're Sounds fucking well. beautiful. They're fucking wicked awesome, man. So, we'll see what... I Man, I hope this... Can you imagine if ratings go up? Can you imagine? Let's pretend. We always talk about the doom and gloom. I always talk about the ratings going down. What happens when WWE gets down to a million and they're tied with AEW? Because that's what they were going for here. So what happens if the ratings start to go up? What happens if WWE's ratings climb up to 2.5 million or 3 million? What if that could happen again, man? Could we could the WWE could save me by this happening? You know what I mean? They could save me by this happening. Yeah, I well Bruce Pritchard, listen, I want to shout out to I love Stephanie McMahon. I really do love Stephanie. Like in, in a not a weird way. I like, you know, love Stephanie. I like Bruce Pritchard. Bruce Pritchard follows my show. I mean, Bruce Pritchard. I mean, 
follows me. I don't know why Bruce hasn't hired me on commentary yet. I mean, if he had a, if he was watching, you'd think he'd go, damn, you know, I've got to hire Joe. I don't care what he's done in the past. You know, I'll defend him to the, to the death. And if you don't believe me, I'll, I mean, I'll show you right now. The, you know what I mean? The guy isn't sub to many places. The guy is not sub to many places. But let's just, uh, let me explain something. Something to wrestle with, Bruce Pritchard? Something to wrestle with, Bruce Pritchard? Featured channels? I mean, this guy, this guy knows the deal. Take a look at the top at the top uh, people featured on his uh, subscriptions page. So Bruce, I know you're watching, brother. I know you're watching, brother. You know, I know you're subscribed to a few people. I see who you're sub to. I see that you're sub to about fifty channels. I see me there. What up, Bruce? Hire me anytime, Bruce Pritchard was very concerned that Joe Cronin was leaving. I'm telling you. Conspiracy theory. I mean, I can sh I can see everybody Bruce Pritchard is subscribed to. I can see them. And we're in there. I know what that means. I'm not really not really sure what that means. St stalks me, I, I don't know. AEW, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm assuming that they've seen where the ratings are. I don't know if this. I don't know if this has to do with Vince McMahon is no longer able to make a decision, like on this as a CEO. I, you know, why would they do this now when Vince, when this whole situation with Vince is going on and all these other things are going on? I mean, maybe it's the. I don't know. I mean, Vince can't really make this decision, can he? Or is Vince like telling Stephanie to do it? Or is this Stephanie and all the other shareholders, did they want to do this and Vince didn't want to do it? Is that what's going on? I don't know. Who who are the people that wanted to change to TV 14 and who are the people that did not want to? That's the, that's the stuff that I'm interested in. Or is this all just coincidence of timing or based on the ratings and things like that? Anyway, guys, listen, I've been live for a while. I got to get going. I really do. I, I Unfortunately... Now, maybe if WWE blows up again, I'll blow up even bigger and I'll come back to being full-time YouTube. But as of right now, I have to run to my third job. Did my first job this morning, doing my second one right now. That's this. And doing my third one, then coming home tonight. And if we can, I'm going to attempt to do some kind of out of nowhere tonight, obviously. Uh, that's going to be big, I believe. Well, maybe we'll have some more information and some stuff to go over. We'll do that. I can't wait to hear what Rostafa has to say about this. That'll be interesting. Um, or whoever else is going to be coming on. I don't know. And, uh, man, I'm going to text Jake right now, see if he knows about it, because I can't wait to talk to Jake about it. Uh, this is crazy. So, wow. If you guys can, subscribe. Shit bum. Join the party. Joe, our teams both debut in 1901, so we did not copy. Oh, really? Shit. I didn't know that. I actually just said that to be a dickhead. I, I don't even know. I, I For all I knew, the White Sox were first. Hell, the White Sox are first, because who the hell wears Red Sox? So by default, you know, you guys probably existed first. But um, no, that's funny, Redcon, man. I, you know, I didn't know that. They should, well, how come there's no Black Sox? Racist baseball. Uh, but I hope you guys, if, if you guys are watching this on the, re watching this on the replay, uh, if you'd like, leave a super thanks down below. If you can, leave a super thanks to support the video. Leave a like, subscribe, whatever. Love to have you. Johnny, thank you for subbing right there. Johnny Griffin, appreciate that, dude. What's up? Welcome to the channel. Everybody else sub. I'll be live with more stuff tonight. And of course, go through all my videos. I've got thousands of videos right here. And of course, patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. We are getting close to 200 patrons. If you guys want to support on Patreon, we're so close, man, to 200 patrons again. 
And um, that will really help me out, man, if you guys want to do that. There's over a thousands of podcasts on Patreon that you can't get on YouTube and that are just crazier than anything on YouTube. I mean, just some an example on Patreon, you have access to all the podcasts with my wife, me, the Corrupted Podcast, 277 episodes of Morning Madness, 286 Corrupteds, wrestling things, music, over 100 songs, uh, note to self, so many things. And we found out the wrestling, the musical is coming. I posted about that the other day. There's so much stuff on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. The link is in the description box down below. And I will see you guys tonight. And Ric Flair, get some wings. Wings! Let's just have wings. Let's just have wings! Let's just have wings. Wings! Let's just have wings! Let's just have wings. You fucking mark! There's 9,000 people that are going to stand up and say, Fuck! Rick Flair is Now Rick Flair can say that on Monday night. There's 9,000 people that are going to stand up and say, Fuck! Rick Flair is I'll see you tonight for uh, potentially a interesting out of nowhere live tonight. This is Wardlow from AEW, and you're watching The Joe Cronin Show. A wrestling podcast with attitude. Back and Bane stumbles on the corner. Robo back to the inside. Super kick! 